Hello, this is Dr. Claire Steffen, and I want to welcome you to the Heal Your Brain Toolbox podcast. I'm a psychologist, a naturopathic educator, also a certified alcohol and drug counselor, and a life coach, wellness coach, and business coach. Today, I wanted to talk with you about animal spirits and the seven teachings Um Previously, I worked in Indian health, and yes, I said Indian health, and I just want to clarify, in some communities, the preference is to uh, label this as Native American or indigenous, but in the community I worked in, um, the preference was to refer to it as Indian health. In fact, when I used the word Native American, I was corrected. Um, and so I am using it appropriately according to the community in which I worked. And um, we were a consolidated tribal a health clinic, and we worked with individuals from many, many different tribes. And the work was very interesting from a mental health perspective. There was a lot of intergenerational trauma that had never been addressed and in some ways not even recognized. And so in terms of the community, there was generally a mistrust of mental health and behavioral health, and it took quite a bit to break through some of those barriers uh, to help people get comfortable with me. In fact, I had to really do some self-exploration to figure out why would anyone in the Indian community relate to me as a Caucasian person. My background is predominantly Celtic and Irish, uh, and so I explored my own ancestry and history, and I found that there was parallels in historical times between what was happening with the Native Americans and what was happening um, in Ireland in terms of herbology and natural health and um, some of the focus on mythology and in specific animal spirits. Um, and so the seven teachings are something that, you know, can guide and provide good counsel um, when an individual is feeling in need of support emotionally or physically to ask for strength and to call on the animal to bring you this strength. And there are many different strengths represented through our animals. And if you think about it, we've domesticated some animals like dogs and cats, and they are become a part of our family and we're very you know, fond of the various breeds, and they all have different temperaments. Um, but they're in each, in their own way, significant and an important part of our families. So if I think about this, there's still many animals that, you know, we get to see in zoos, um, and whether or not you agree with that or, you know, feel specifically that they should be held in captivity is another question. Um, but these animals do represent strengths and resilience. So the first one that I wanted to talk about is the bear. And the teaching of the bear is courage and healing. I had a funny little experience. One time I was at a health and wellness expo, and this was before I worked in Indian health. And I kept coming back to this one booth, and the woman who was running the booth was um, Indian, and she had a lot of different interesting product that um, represented Native American culture. And I kept being drawn to the medicine wheel and in specific, the bear. So she quickly asked me, when is your birthday? And my birthday September 3rd. And she said, well, the reason you're drawn to the bear is because you are the bear and the bear is the healer. Um, and so light bulbs went off and it clicked and it made sense to me that, yes, I've been involved in healing all of my life in one capacity or another, whether it's through therapeutics or through education, I've always been involved in healing. Um, and so it made sense that, you know, my medicine wheel sign would be the bear. So the teaching of the bear is courage and healing. And, um, you know, the bear has, uh, of course, a great deal of strength, you know, and the bear hibernates in the winter time and comes back um, in the spring. And if you follow that cycle in life, you might find that you're an individual 
who tends to stay closer to home or have more of a introspective time during the winter. The second teaching is the buffalo, and the buffalo's teaching is that of respect and self-empowerment. And, you know, we have seen um, the loss of the buffalo, you know, that they're not as abundant as they once were. And, of course, Native culture really depended on the buffalo to survive. Um, <clears throat> so the buffalo gave us, you know, that ability to sustain life. So if you're in a position where you feel like you're challenged and you need to dig deep inside of yourself to find a way to sustain or to be empowered, call on the spirit of the buffalo. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be that you were born under the sign of this animal. You can simply call on the animal for its strength. The third teaching is that of the turtle, and the turtle represents truth and adaptability, which we certainly all need in life. Um, to be adaptable and resilient um, is, you know, an extremely important health quality. And if you think about the image of the turtle, the shell, you know, and kind of somewhere it's going inward in order to do that self-exploration and find your inner truth. So if that's something you struggle with, then perhaps call on the turtle and let the turtle bring that teaching to you um, at this point in time. And, you know, it, it's there's a lot of images that you can... Uh, have accessible to you and perhaps even, you know, pull one up on your phone just to be a reminder or cue that you would need that strength. <clears throat> the fourth teaching is the Sabe, and Sabe looks like Sasquatch. And what they give us is honesty and instinct. And in some ways we, you know, maybe in our culture don't always rely on our instinct, and perhaps even with what happens in regards to social media, people sometimes exaggerate their self-images and the truth about who they are, and it becomes a different reality. Um, and it's just a reminder that, you know, instinctively we are worthy and we are good just as we are in ourselves, and that um, this is an important you know, self-acceptance, and that, that's an instinctive kind of um, message in life. So pull up the image of the sabe and use that as your guide. If you're struggling with any issues around honesty or trusting your instincts. The fifth teaching is that of the beaver, and the beaver brings wisdom and confidence and this is another animal that was used, you know, historically uh, for sustainability and trade. Um, economics relied on, you know, the beaver pelts um, and the exchange, you know, with between cultures. Um, so, you know, there we all have a need for wisdom, and it can come in many different forms. And having that knowledge base and the strength of knowing that you're well-informed can give you that confidence. So always seeking that wisdom, and in specific, the inner wisdom, um, to be able to move forward in life with confidence. Um, so, you know, if you look at these teachings, and the animals each represent these teachings in a variety of ways, and sometimes we can overlook them because as humans we tend to think that, you know, there's a hierarchy where animals are much beneath us. Um, and in some ways, we need them more to survive than they need us. Uh, the sixth teaching is that of the eagle. And the eagle represents love and spirit. And you'll find the image of the, the eagle in many religious sects and in religious music. Um, it shows up quite frequently. And, you know, you think of an eagle or any of the birds of prey that, you know, fly overhead and they have a, a view in which they can see, um, you know, in a vast way. 
which we're not always able to do as human beings. So if you're in a spot where you're needing to step back and look at things from a different perspective and be able to see a broader perspective, call on the ego for that spirit and that energy to guide you and to assist you in being able to be more broad-minded. The seventh teaching is that of the wolf, and the wolf represents love and spirit. And um, the wolf, you know, they're a pack animal. And so, you know, a pack animal um, really relies on all of the various members within the pack in order to survive. And humans, in many ways, require that ability to you know rely on one another in a communal sense and I think you know in our culture sometimes we have lost the sense of community that was so readily available in previous times and you know it's an important aspect of being human is to have a place to fit in and feel a sense of belonging um, and to feel that connection and to feel like you are accepted or that you matter. Um, So there's many other animals that are not a part of the seven teachings, but each in their own way represent some knowledge or some energy or spirit that can guide you and could be beneficial to you in life. Um, The one um, that I see frequently here in the state of Oregon is the elk, and their spirit energy is endurance and dignity. Uh, And we definitely need to be able to have endurance in order to sustain, you know, the trying times that we go through in life. Another one is the horse teaching. Horse represents freedom. And, you know, much of what has developed in our culture has depended upon the horse. And um, we wouldn't, you know, they were previously a form of transportation. We wouldn't have been able to develop our culture without the horse and so the strength of the horse is very important um, when you need to maybe explore a new venture or develop or create a sense of freedom in your life. Another one that I I really enjoy is the look of the alpaca and these little animals teach us patience and stamina and uh, you know oftentimes our patience has tried in life and we could call on them in order to give us Uh, that type of energy in order to be more patient. Um, The peacock is one that represents power and beauty. And, you know, our culture focuses so much on the external. Um, So maybe think of it in terms of an internal beauty. Um, You could be like the peacock and just kind of shuffle around and show off in that way. And maybe there's a time where that's important to be able to learn how to do that and enjoy yourself in that way. The turkey represents abundance and gratitude, and we certainly need more of that in our life. Um, so there's many, you know, different spirits that the animals represent. I, maybe another time I'll talk about the ocean life and ocean mammals and the kind of energy that they give us. Um, certainly we could talk more about the animal spirit in another session. Um, but, you know, never underestimate the power of the animal and how much they Um, enhance our lives and how much they improve our culture Um, and just the variety of animals that are available to us throughout the world and that you know still there are some places um, and often you know we still rely on the animals for sustainability. So I hope you enjoyed this little session on animal spirits And I look forward to talking with you again in a future episode of Heal Your Brain Toolbox. This one was a little bit different um, in that perhaps it kind of delved into alternative, um, if you think of it that way. But perhaps it isn't really alternative because natural health has always been with us and actually existed much longer and uh, prior to allopathic medicine. And so this holistic healing approach could be incorporated or integrated into even your allopathic treatment um, and can, you know, sit side by side along uh, allopathic treatment. So perhaps call on it 
and use that energy in that way uh, for self-healing. Thank you for listening.